Hi guys! <laughs> I was a little bit later than I wanted, but I forgot <laughs> to get some stuff ready, but now I'm here. I just need to figure out how to set up my camera first. I did a stream last Wednesday in a YouTube, in a Facebook group. So my camera had a weird setup, but now it's okay. <laughs> so I'm glad you found it. Let me get my iPad ready so I can see what you guys are asking. It's always difficult because YouTube and Facebook really work differently <laughs> with live streams. So every time I need to figure out how it works. So I thought I could see your comments somewhere. Let me check if I can find them. Let me see. So I found a live. That's good, that's step one. <laughs> I think if I do it like this. Hmm. I can't really see the things you say, but. Ah, here they are. <laughs> I just need to switch accounts on my iPad. Oh, yes. Now I know what to do. Ha, you did. <laughs> so I might switch a little between Dutch and English. But that depends a little bit on how many of you are actually Dutch. So I'm figuring out where my life is. <laughs> So now I'm almost ready. <laughs> it's funny that you can't find your own live video on our own channel. <laughs> Why is it so difficult? Maybe we can find it like this. Yes, there it is. Yay. Let me see if I can. I have this really old iPad. So I can't really get the app on my iPad anymore. <laughs> because it's just too old and I need to update my iPad. But whenever I try to do that, it says I don't have enough uh, space anymore to update it. <laughs> so I think I need a new iPad, but that's okay. I'm going to do it like this. This is okay. But then you know that if I don't um, immediately <laughs> react to what you guys are saying, it's probably be, probably because I haven't seen it. <laughs> so I apologize up front. So what I'm going to do Today is to show you a little bit of um, some basic mixed media techniques. So probably for some of you it will be like the known techniques and I'm going to do um, like the same tech that I did in a live uh, stream last week in the Hobby Vision group. So if you've already seen that it's probably going to be a little bit of the same but I hope that's okay. <laughs> but for you Lindy fans it probably will be new so if you don't know a lot about me um just a little introduction <laughs> so i'm from holland and i've been in the team for almost two and a half years now and i'm an extremely big fan of embossing powders and squirts 
So um, today I'm going to show you um, some really cool, I find them really cool techniques with embossing powders that I think are quite easy to do. So if you're just new to mixed media, uh, you probably own some embossing powders. So this is, uh, these are techniques that you can easily use. <laughs> Thanks, Vilma. <laughs> so, okay, so I've got some stuff here. Um, <laughs> I've been, um, uh, I had this event yesterday with working out and so I was really tired. <laughs> so I decided this afternoon I could take a little nap so you all know what the outcome was. It was like 3.45 and I woke up <laughs> I thought, oh no, <laughs> I totally forgot that I needed to do the live. Well, not really forgot, but I kind of forgot <laughs> to put on an, an alarm. So um, I rushed upstairs and I thought, oh no, <laughs> I forgot to make some resin. But um, I always say when something uh, isn't working out on your project, you always uh, can start over by using black or white gesso. So I found these wings and I thought, I could demonstrate you guys how I do it when I mess something up because I needed these, but I can really easily paint them black and just start over. Hi, Daniela. Okay, so I just got some stuff out and I might not be using it all, but I like to have some stuff ready that I'm probably going to use. So these are some chipboards by Dusty Attic. I'm planning on uploading uh, the same stream on my own YouTube channel too as well. And uh, I will link some um, of the other products by the other manufacturers too. So I'm not going to only use Lindy's <laughs> because I have some Dusty Attic uh, chipboard, some uh, Studio Light chipboard. So I, I want to link those materials too, but I will do that on my own channel later after the video. Oi Bianca! Yeah. So this is by Dusty Attic. So what I always do with uh, my tags is just getting an old tag, one that I created before, um, laying it down on top of a piece of cardboard and just reusing the cardboard that is coming to my home with all my craft supplies. So that's a way to reuse it. <laughs> so just going to cut this into a tag shape and the fun thing with cardboard I'm not going to do that on this design but I'm going to show you something that I really like to do with cardboard um, on like tags or anything if, if you get those that's that upper Hi, Conchi. <laughs> that upper layer, if you remove it, you get like this really cool structure or uh, texture. I think it's called texture. And that is something that you can also do on top of your tags, which I think is really awesome to do. So let me demonstrate on one because <laughs> I just like to show you guys like really thorough you, uh, the way you should do things. <laughs> so. Just going to quickly cut this one, two. And these scissors are the Tim Holtz scissors or the tonic scissors. And these are absolutely my favorite ones. So if you're ever in need or of new, a new pair of scissors, I should, I definitely recommend these. So here's what I always do. I like to get the top layer. And if it doesn't come off that easily, you can always get, where are they? <laughs> I've like these pants. Let me check. These, you can always get these and just Loosen that top layer and it's easier to get them off. So if I'm going to create something with this, 
I'm not going to use, or I, I, sh I don't have to use a lot of modeling paste or anything because it's already, already textured, like really cool. I really like this. This is one of the most easy techniques there is, but it's really cool. It almost looks like a stone wall, don't you think? <laughs> So I'm probably going to use this later on, I guess, because I like to show you something with this. Let me see. I can do something with white, maybe. Let me start with this so it can dry when I create the other one. So let me get some medians. Okay, so I'm going to create a white one it's not going to be a really difficult one because I kind of this was a kind of impulsive <laughs> decision to create two tags but I can just show you how cool it is using really really super simple techniques like this So I'm not going to cover it like really good, just to create this kind of shabby whitewashed look. And this is going to be really cool later on. So um, for my elements with the molds, uh, the silicon molds. I use um, amazing casting resin or fast curing, what's it called? <laughs> um, yeah, well in Dutch we call it PU resin, but it's polyurethane, I think. But um, <laughs> if you need to know what kind of resin it is, just send me a message through Facebook and I will get back to you. I will look it up in English. But I think it's called polyuterine or something. But it's a resin that is like really curing within 10 minutes if you <laughs> get the, um, the mix right. And if you mess it up a little bit, like I usually do, <laughs> it takes about 20 minutes to cure. But it's really fast comparing to uh, clay or other mediums. So that's why I have these like plastic kind of resin pieces, but I really like to use these. So I thought I could do something with a wing. I like these wings and maybe some other stuff, maybe a little clock. And the reason that I didn't prepare a lot of things that I wanted to do today is mainly because I know quite a lot of you um, ask us and I know that when I started Mixed Media, that was one of my main questions is how do you do, how do you decide on what to use? And uh, I thought it would be fun for you to see how I decided because <laughs> it isn't something that I really think about. I just do it. I just lay it down and I figure it out while I'm working on it. But I thought it could be helpful to show you um, guys a little bit of how I do that. Mm, oh, I like the clock. I like, that's a nice clock. I think these three are by Prima Marketing, but maybe the wings are by Stamperia. I'm not sure. This is fun. Let me do it this way. Oh, I wish that I could see you guys talk in my video, but I can't see it. Let me see if I can do it like this. No, oh, that's too bad.
I'm a bit afraid I might miss things that you say, so I probably will scroll through your comments later on after I finish the video to answer some of your questions. That's probably easier, I guess. Okay, so that's that. And the thing that I wanted to show you guys too is what I like to do if I <laughs> feel like uh, I feel like crafting, but I don't have enough inspiration or anything, or I don't have a lot of time. I uh, take some time to create these resin pieces and just uh, order them and have uh, just to have them ready whenever I want to create something. There's a spider in there. Oh no, that's not a spider, it's a gear. <laughs> so that's why I have like this <laughs> stash of uh, resin pieces. But it's always easy to have this ready. No, I'm not. I'm just going to do the crack. So, I glue this with my heavy body gel, but I want to do a little something with some texture. Just a nice black sand texture paste. And I hope it will dry fast enough because this is really cool, but I'm not sure if it will, but we'll see. And I'm not sure it will work through this stencil, but we'll see it too. So this is kind of how it works with mixed media is that you just try something and if it doesn't work, you, you'll know for the next time. And sometimes you come up with a very cool new technique and it's something you're probably going to use over and over again just because it's really nice. But that's the cool thing with mixed media. It feels like experimenting over and over again. And the fun thing with YouTube and Facebook is Sometimes people come up with really great ideas that you can borrow. <laughs> so that's a cool thing with our community, right? Ah, uh, look at this. This is cool. I like this. Okay, so these pastes are going to dry really, really... Um, well, they're going to be tough to clean if you don't clean them right away. So that is something that I would definitely recommend you to do when you use these really heavily textured pastes because they're gonna mess up your stencil if you don't clean them. Okay, and guys, if you like my video, please do a thumbs up <laughs> because the thumbs up makes it easier for other people to find this live video so if you like it please do <laughs> it's really sad <laughs> it's all making sound and it really sounds like i'm walking over my path outside with all the gravel it's real sand, <laughs> but it's always almost clean up. So let me get this. So I'm going to quickly dry this a bit, a bit, but I will work on it later. So I'm just going to add my little resin pieces and then just glue them on the tag and leave it for a bit. So in case you wonder why I am um, cleaning my table with a baby wipe, um, because it looks like wood, <laughs> it's just a little tip. If uh, I bought a really big glass plate uh, that I use on top of my table and underneath there is a, um, yeah, how are these called? These are actually the screens that people use for photography. Um, it's like a sheet, 
a plastic sheet. So I got that in two pieces. One I'm using for my photos and the other one is underneath on top of my table with a glass plate or the glass on top of it. And this is like a really thick piece of glass so I can use it as a tabletop. But it's really easy because I can spray my inks or use my paint on top of the glass and it, yeah, it works like really, really well. It's a bit of the same when you're using the Tim Holtz glass plate but it was brown and I wanted to use a light colored table, so. Okay, let's do some white gesso on top of these. Because it's um, a, some sort of plastic kind of material, uh, ink or paint won't really cover as easy. So I always use a layer of gesso on top of these because it will be going to, uh, it's going to become a really tough job to get the, that ink on if you don't use gesso. So if you wonder what is gesso, <laughs> gesso is a, well, you could call it a base layer and it's actually an acrylic paint, but the difference with, well, the normal acrylic paint is that gesso had a, has a little bit of a tooth in there so um, you can see it like the primer uh, that you would use on a wall before you actually going to paint it. It just makes it easier for ink to get a grip or cover. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this right, but <laughs> you'll know what I mean, I guess. So this is the first layer. second layer here and it's not about working like really neat or really perfect because I really don't mind if it's not covered all the way but I just want to make it easier later on to get that ink on and I'm planning on using the skirts just because I can I really like them <laughs> so this is how I would work with them So gesso comes in like different type of gessos or maybe different manufacturers or brands and it's totally up to you to decide what brands um, you really like because I like the thick and heavy gessos because just because I like them but um, you can well it's it's up to you what you like I can imagine that people might like a little less a uh, heavy gesso, a little less thick, or maybe a little bit easier to paint with, or that's just something that you should experiment with. Uh, you'll figure out what you like. So, let's get this dry. So the rest will dry when I set it aside and then I'm using some thick heavy gel to glue it on top of the tag and heavy gel is actually an acrylic medium that is used um, to mix into acrylic paints to make the paint like really thick and heavy and um, within mixed media we um, use it uh, to glue on our uh, elements because it's a really good glue as well. If it dries, elements won't come off anymore. Let me get that camera a little bit more in the middle because otherwise you guys have a half screen. <laughs> that is better, I think. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. <laughs> I just, I just see them now, so thank you. It's funny because I thought there wasn't really that much. Um, well, you know that the video on YouTube is going through 
later there's like two minutes or something in a Facebook video. But now I see there's a little bit of a lag too, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm just gluing this on and setting it aside. Okay, so now I need to figure out what, <laughs> what's the top of my clock and not gluing it the other way around. I think this is it, yeah. I'm not sure if this is how I like it. But... Well, the fun thing with heavy gel is that you can easily um, reorder everything because it dries quite slow. That's cool because now I'm deciding on where to get that clock. And because it hasn't dried yet, I can easily reorder everything. I like the way this looks. This is okay. So let me dry it just a little bit because otherwise when I <laughs> set it aside, I'm, it might fall off or anything and I don't want that. Okay, this is going to get a drying spot here. And let's continue with the other one. So this is going to be a black tag. And this is, this is one that I created before in a live stream on Facebook. And this is a technique I know a lot of the people that watch that show or that stream, we're super enthusiastic about it because it's so easy, but so much fun and it's fun to do and it has this really pretty outcome and I'm painting my nails. <laughs> so my uh, nail technician, I think you call them. <laughs> she said last week when she fixed my nail because I broke one, she said, okay, I have this new top coat which I'm going to use on your nails because your nails they are just like, they need to go through so much pain. <laughs> and this is a top coat that is especially designed for like hairdressers and people that work with paint a lot. And well, the new uh, Finnaware wax is like really, um, it kind of sucks <laughs> into the top layer of my nails. So she was really disappointed that they didn't look as shiny as uh, they they did when she just first created them so she she said I'm going to use that new layer on your nails <laughs> you're not going to mess up your nails ever again but I did it anyway so I think nice nails and mixed media just don't go together <laughs> but I tried to do it anyway So let me demonstrate you guys why I like my glass that much. This is why. It's just easy to clean. This is so easy. And it's clean. That is just perfect. I like this. But those scrapers are <laughs> quite dangerous because I've hurt my fingers like way more often than I should. So please be careful when using them. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is use some um, modeling paste. 
I really like to use the black modeling paste uh, because I'm going to use my Lindy's embossing powder and I'm probably going to use some angel wings and angel wings is like this translucent opal kind of uh, cool powder that changes on a darker background so that's why I'm going to use a black modeling paste but first I need to get this one done I really like to show you guys how I created this one so I'm just going to color it black with gesso And this is the easy thing that if you mess up something because you don't like the way it um, came out or you decided on using a different color than you thought or well, whatever reason that you think you can't use something anymore, you always can because you just paint it black and start over again. Yes, Gesso is a girl's best friend, or a mixed media artist's best friend. It definitely is. That is something that if people ask me if they want to start doing with mixed media and they ask me what should I buy, I always start with black Gesso. Definitely black Gesso. And black is just a little bit easier, I think, than white, so that's why I'm creating a black one as well. So now we can start over again with this one. It's as easy as that. Okay, let me see. I think I'm going to do some black on these as well. The new embossing powders, so the chunky ones, they their coverage is really, really good. So they're really opaque. So if you're only going to work with those, you probably don't have to cover everything in black gesso. But I am not sure yet what I'm going to do with <laughs> these chipboard pieces. So I'm going to um, add some black gesso just in case. I thought this was really cute. Maybe just a swirl. I thought these were cool as well. Now I just need to make sure that I don't rip them. Just get them out in one piece. <laughs> yes. I did it. This is a way too cool <laughs> shrill to use on top of something. I'm going to cut this one in two halves so I can use and show more of it this is better this is way better okay this is cool okay so that one this is going to be how I'm going to work with it, I think. I think I'm going to cut this in two, two. I probably should have used embossing powder first and then cut, cut them, but uh, this is cool. I like the way this looks. Okay, so let me add some black gesso to these. I mostly use a sponge on chipboard because it's easier to get that all that black on and I find it a little bit easier than using a brush 
for other two. So these are just like the the um, budget store kind of. I think these are bathroom sponges, but you can use whatever sponge you like, of course. Just need a little bit more paint. I almost said enough, but. So let me try this. So I'm really curious where you guys are all from because I can see the participants. So I'm not sure if you are mostly from Holland or maybe mostly from other parts of the world. So I'd love to hear where you're from. And if you worked with Lindy's before. Ah, Italy. <laughs> Ah, uh, cool, you're from around the world. So it was hard for me to figure out what time would be best, but I guess this is kind of the best time. Ah, uh, cool. <laughs> I always like how um, the crafting community kind of unites everybody from around the world. I really think that is cool. And most people are nice to each other. <laughs> there are some situations where they aren't, but most of the time, it's a really nice community. Okay, so another demonstration why I really like my glass plate. <laughs> barking downstairs. I'm not sure why. So, this is that. Clean it up a bit. Great. <laughs> yes, that's something that is really good for the perfectionist. That is just, I like that. <laughs> um, let me see. I need to get rid of some stuff because my table is a little bit too full. And I can't work with, I can't work like that. Okay. So this is a black modeling paste. Um, you can use whatever darker paste uh, you want. It's just that I have this one. It's just a, a regular black modeling paste. That's a good question, Bianca. I think it's around one meter and 20 centimeters or something. It's like the um the length of my table but then then without um a centimeter or 15 on the sides but it's as wide as my table is as deep as wide well if this is my table <laughs> my glass plate is like this i hope that makes sense okay let me get my knife Okay, so the fun thing is with Lindy's embossing powder is that you can use it like on literally everything 
and um, you don't necessarily have to use like the embossing ink. So you can use them with Frisa Mark, of course, or any other embossing ink, but it's always also really, really cool to use them on top of modeling paste or anything. So that was something that I wanted to demonstrate you guys, because this is a technique that I kind of figured out when I just recent, uh, when I just started using uh, Lindy's Gang products. And it's a technique that I really find interesting to use and you can use it in all kinds of projects on cards or tags or mixed media or whatever you're working on. So I kind of found out last Wednesday that a lot of you guys don't know that you can use multiple powders at once. So that was fun to learn because I thought it was so obvious that you can do that, but I kind of figured out <laughs> that it wasn't. So I'm going to demonstrate you guys multiple <laughs> use of colors and just one layer. So black modeling paste mostly is a really tough one to clean. So I'm going to clean this stencil real fast because otherwise I won't be able to use it anymore. The fun thing is that I'm really not an, somebody that really works on a clean table and everything, but every time when I see my videos, I, <laughs> I come across like somebody that's always cleaning their first supplies and I, I'm not. Okay, so let me clean those sides because that won't be real pretty. It's really messy working with all the black. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. I haven't really decided on what color I'm going to use, but I think I'm going to use the black and white one with some silver embossing powder. I think I'm going to do it like this. It's clean, but I like it. Um, let me get a piece of paper. The only thing that you need to keep in mind working with two uh, or maybe even more colors is that you will, well, let's call it contaminate <laughs> the other color. Um, yeah, let me demonstrate what I mean. I can't really explain it really well. So the thing is, if I use this color, Get those small spoons. I'm just going to add a bit of color on the sides. And the color that comes off is like one color, it's just this powder. So this powder I can um, put back in the container, but if I do this with a second color, I most definitely will contaminate the other color with this one. And that is something that if you don't want that, you should put it in a different container or anything. I hope that makes sense. I'm really happy to see you all. <laughs> You're with so many guys. That's awesome. 
That is really, really cool. Okay, so these are the new Linnies Gang embossing powders, which are amazing. And I really, really, really love them. This is one that has a lot of flakes in them, like mica flakes. And they're probably not going to stick as easy on my modeling paste. But if you want them to um, stick to your um, project, you should use um, uh, like a thick embossing ink. So I always use the Ranger Dabber. That's this little thingy. And if you use a brush and just add a little, a little bit of this ink on top of your project and then add the powder, it will probably stick to it. But if I'm going to do that on like this modeling paste, it isn't really that sticky. So that's why it won't, um, it won't stick onto the surface. So here you can see that the flakes aren't going to stick, but that's okay. I knew that would happen. So what I meant with the contamination is that my silver um, embossing powder that I used before uh, probably will be in this powder as well. I don't mind with this color, but you can imagine if you're using like say a blue and a pink one, you don't want your pink embossing powder into the blue container. So that's what I meant with um, getting it into a different container. Okay, so this is going to take a little while. Just because, I'm not sure, but I think because it's, the surface is different, it takes a bit longer to melt. But I really like the end result, so it's worth it, <laughs> if you ask me. So I'm using the Ranger um, embossing tool or craft tool or whatever you like to call it. And um, this is really my favorite one. So um, the reason why is because it's small. It's quite, um, it's, it's relatively quiet. And um, uh, using like these type of embossing powders, if you have one that is blowing like really hard, <laughs> Um, it will blow away all your powder. So you have a lot of craft tools or embossing tools that blow like really, really hard. And um, well, that's not something that I like when using my powders. But again, that's just what you prefer to use. So I really like the way this looks. It's gorgeous. And these two match really perfect. I really like it. But it's taking long. That's only bad thing I wanted to say, but it's not a bad thing. I'm not that patient. I think this will be quite cool with white uh, modeling paste as well. Just thinking about it and I, I think this will work with white modeling paste too. I think that will be look cool as well. I really like the way this looks. So I'm a big fan of combining Lindy's Gang with uh, Finnebear Wax. Just because it's, um, um, I don't know, they just match really nice. So I'm probably going to use some Opal Magic Wax together with my powders here. Uh, 
Uh, this really looks cool. So last Wednesday when I demonstrated this at the Hobby Vision group, I also showed you how you can create these little droplets. And these are really cool. And this is just a glass, well, droplet, or how do you call them? Uh, with a um, layer of embossing powder on the back. So I'm not going to demonstrate it again, um, just because it takes a while. But just so you know, you can really create awesome things using um, the chunky embossing powder besides what I'm showing you right now. Okay, so I think this looks really cool. Look at this. It's gorgeous, right? So for the colors, I've used Groovy Granite and Slam Dunk Silver. So just in case you wonder what colors I'm using. So these are going to get a different color than this is going to. So I'm going to set that aside and work on my chipboard. Let me get another color. Hmm, this is going to be cool, I think. Ah, I need a blue one. <laughs> Yes, this is going to be the one. Okay, so now I'm using my Versa Mark because I think that's easier with the smaller chipboard pieces. Making sure there's enough ink on top of it. Kind of missed the spot over here. <laughs> now it is covered. And I'm first going to start with a layer of metallic embossing powder. And this is Coolman Copper. And let me get my tweezers. Let me show you how this looks. I need to. Get the focus right, but it won't. Yes, now it does. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> so these are the new uh, ultra fine uh, metallic embossing powders. And these are really, really cool. Thank you! <laughs> this takes a while too, but... So I've got a little secret ingredient that I like to use on top of uh, chipboard pieces. And that is my, um, yeah, it's called Ultra Thick Embossing Enamel, Animal, Animal, Enamel. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, also called, also known as UT. <laughs> and that's like a really thick embossing powder. And if you, use it in a one or two layers on top of your Lindy's powders it is going to look really cool so that's my secret ingredient that i'm going to demonstrate you but first i'm going to because this is like really covered well so i don't need an extra layer going to use another type of Lindy's Gang powder. My angel wings. 
but you could use any other um, transparent or translucent or like the shiny ones, the not opaque ones. But I'm just going to demonstrate how it looks with the angel wings. And this is angel wings mauve. As you can see, it has this really cool color. That's a good question. Well, the ultra refined metallic ones are five colors. Um, and the ones that I'm using now, the angel wings, there are several, but I know some of them uh, ended as well. So I think it's best for you to check out the website to see um, the colors that are, uh, that are available right now. So it started to change into this really cool purple kind of color. I think it's really awesome. I'm just laying it down on a table because that's a bit easier. This is so cool. Ooh. It's hot. I really like this. I kind of messed it up over there. <laughs> okay. So let's continue with the rest. I'm going to use Don't Scream Aquamarine <laughs> because it's just really cool on these little parts. Just adding a bit of further mark. And I'm just going to use the same color to make it a little bit easier. I'm not sure if it's going to stick really good. We'll see. This is also one embossing powder with a lot of mica flakes in there and they won't stick onto my um, chipboard, but that's okay. I know they won't, so. It's just that I really like the color, so that's why I'm using it anyway. So Nuneka is really being my assistant. Thank you. <laughs> I'm always wondering what your name actually is because I think you get called Nunu as well, right? <laughs> so I'm always thinking, so what should I call you? Is it really Nuneka or is it Nunu or? So I have a hard time getting my camera focused, but <laughs> so, but the smiley isn't an answer. <laughs> now I still don't know. <laughs> it 
<laughs> okay, so now I won't forget anymore. So, if you haven't seen Nunu her um, live stream of last weekend, you most definitely definitely should check that out because she's doing like this really in-depth, um, like in-depth live stream about the embossing powders. So that's really cool. So if you have any questions about embossing powders, you should really check out her stream as well. Oh, I like this one. It's gorgeous on top of the chipboard, right? So I'm going to add a layer of ultra thick embossing powder as well, because that will do some magic together with these. This is going to be really cool. Oh, these are so awesome. I really, really, really like these colors. <laughs> That's what teamies are for. <laughs> This is cool. Yes. Okay, let me get that. Chunky powder. These are, this is actually looking like some sort of sugar. It's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to use Furzar Mark on top of these. Okay, so now you are watching this stream like with a lot of people. That is really cool. Thanks, guys. And again, if you like the stream, just do a little thumbs up, please. <laughs> okay. Get these in there. So it does look like sugar, <laughs> but it really isn't. Let me show you what happens when you melt this. This is really cool. Okay, let me see if I can focus it. Yes. So when this is melted, it's actually like you're adding um, multiple layers of uh, clear embossing powder. So when it's melted, it almost looks like it's plastic of any kind. And I think that is really cool. The other side. And these are really cool too. Let me show you guys how this looks when melted. Come on, camera, focus. <laughs> this is so cool. Okay. Check this out. Ooh, I almost forgot to put it up. Oh, look at this. This is really cool. You don't you don't you don't even see that it's wood or chipboard. It's really cool. So I'm going to do these pieces real quick too. I want them to look the same. <laughs> Oh, 
I always like to use these plastic containers because it's so easy with powders like these. You don't have to use uh, like a paper or anything. You just put it in there, tap it off. I think that's really nice. So I'm going to do this on a table because it's a little bit easier than holding it in front of the camera, but I wanted to show you from up close what happens with the powder. This is so cool. So if you're going to create a winter themed kind of project, it's really cool to use um, like angel wings powder or any other really nice translucent opal kind of powder together with um, the chunky embossing enamel, I think I pronounced it right. <laughs> and if you don't melt it all the way, they look like little um, ice, ice drops. Really, it's really cool to see. So this is, ow, what happens? Oh, this is really cool. I love it. I think this is so pretty. Okay. That's that. Now I'm going to add a bit of angel wings here, just because we can, and I'm kind of addicted to my angel wings powder. <laughs> so this is just a regular background stamp. This one is by Studio Light, a Dutch brand. This, this is so cool. Get my piece of paper back. This is going to look really cool, I think. So this is what I meant with contamination. <laughs> So that wasn't a really smart move to do, but there was some powder on there. Oh wow, this really looks cool. It's just the perfect color together. <laughs> It's awesome. Okay, that's cool. Let me get some wax. I'm just going to add a bit of color. Because this is the color that I'm going to use on the wings as well. So I need to create somewhat of a matching background. Just adding a little bit of color, not too much. It's a bit on the sides. It's really cool if you move it <laughs> in the light. It's just awesome, it's like black. Color, black color. I'm going to use it on my wings as well. So I'm probably going to finish the other tag in a different live stream because I really want to uh, give the squirts the attention they deserve. <laughs> so that is one that I, I think I'm going to uh, just move that tag to a second uh, live stream with some basic techniques covering the squirts. I think that is best because otherwise I would like really um, rush and 
I don't really like to rush when explaining you guys the things that I like to do. So I'm really trying my best to get the color in there in between the wings and making sure that it's covered because I'm going to use a silver, a silver uh, wax as well to um, accentuate, I'm not sure if that's a word, but to make sure you really see the texture of the wings. I thought I might use some of that blue wax on my frame as well, because it otherwise would be a little well, weird, because everything is like blue and silver and then there's something purple in the middle. Okay. And then I'm going to add some silver. Yes, I'm going to add silver. Cool. This was probably the color that it was before. But now I demonstrated how I created these wings. I think this is a really cool combination of color. Together with the frame and everything, it's going to be, it's going to look nice. I think I'm going to use the frame like this, yes. So for the little, little tiny pieces, I'm going to use my glue gun. I'm not really a big fan of a glue gun with mixed media, but with the little tiny pieces, I like to use the glue gun just because it's a little bit easier. Just make sure that you don't burn your fingers. <laughs> Now I should really make up my mind what I wanted to do with the frame. I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to show you guys the other one that I created last week as well, because it's like the same technique, but then you can see what different color use uh, does with a project because that one really does look different but the techniques are actually quite similar Okay, so let's add a text. But now I should think of what I'm going to add. I like the little textbook by Finnerbear. So now I can create a matching set. That's cool. Because this is the one that I created 
last Wednesday. They're like a set. <laughs> I think that's cute. I'm going to get a different one, a different text. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. I don't think I should use that because I'm not that quiet. <laughs> what shall we do? Uh, be gentle with yourself. I like that one. I like to use this corru corrugated cardboard. Um, on the back of my text stickers just to make them look a bit more interesting. And then just use my scissors. Where are they? <laughs> They're here. 